Good evening. Welcome to Ozarks Tonight. I'm Brian Calfano, joined by Amy Blancett and Nick Reed, our Ozarks first contributors. And tonight's topic, my friends, is early childhood education in the Show Me State. Apparently, it is at the bottom of the barrel in terms of funding and performance, too. What's yes. the deal, Amy? What's yes. going on? So um, it is part of the bottom of the barrel, as you said, when it comes to funding. Uh, we recently in Springfield ended up getting funding um, for pre-K education. Um, and they, uh, basically what they did is took from one area of the education and funneled it into pre-K. Um, the importance in that is that, it, that kids who are not kindergarten ready, um, we end up seeing delay. And if by the third grade they're not caught up with reading, math, and other skills, we see that delay continue on throughout. And we also see a greater dropout rate. So when we talk about academic attainment and what academic attainment means for the social economic stability in our country, um, really investing in making sure that we've got our population, our children, you know, our future ready to go for school. Not only does it improve their grades, but it also decreases the demand on the teachers. Uh, we see less paras needed. We, need, we see you know, the class sizes can be larger because we have kids that are ready to learn and we're not having to have all of the additional services to get them caught up. And early childhood in this case is pre-K. Pre-K. Okay. There's no money though, Nick. Right? Oh. Come on. <laughs> we have no, there, I mean, this is a state. They, they did not This is a state that every time there's somebody sneezing, we have to cut the budget. So how do we address this problem? Well, first off, states do have to balance their budgets. It's not like the federal government. We don't have well, the ability Missouri, to print money. Missouri takes that so, one very seriously. No. I've lived in several states where they had to balance the budget, but somehow it just never happened. So Missouri, to its credit, takes that very seriously. And that means, of course, withholds by the governor and all kinds of fights during the budget time and that kind of deal. There's just not the well, it's not that it's, it, Well, it's not that it's cut. It just has never been an, er, it's ne, yeah, it's never been an area in which there was public funding. I was one. Yeah, I, I went to preschool over on Evangel campus. Well, just down the division here, in fact. Um, and uh, clearly it worked for me. The, the <laughs> Listen, college I, dropout. Yeah, you know. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I didn't, I don't, is it dropping out if they make you leave? Right, I don't, I I don't know. So. Kicked out. But um, listen, I, I'm a big proponent of uh, fixing something before you add to it. And we do, I believe, have problems with education overall in our country. I think our answer is always throw more money at it, and that doesn't help. Um, we're about middle of the road with other developed countries in terms of outcomes, students that go out prepared in the world. And so what I would really, really I think what would be more beneficial is figuring out why that's happening and fixing that before we decide to add another year to something that's not working. And I, 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 I believe there's, there would be more to gain on the backside for students who graduate by fixing a current system that isn't working as well as it could, as opposed to just you know getting them started a year earlier on it. Uh, it's not even about getting them started just one year early. When we're talking about the early childhood education, it includes other programs, not just all government, but it adding parents as teachers and, and other uh, areas that you know, locally are supported. And so with that, we're talking about making sure that parents know the games that increase gray matter in a child. So leaving the record player on to, to quote uh, the, the correct the former type, Vice President the type Biden. The of music, the though, does, does matter. But even the types of games that we play with the kids, um, decreasing the amount of media that's the entertainment and creating engagement. So those things matter, and they matter before the age of two years old. So it's not just can we add another grade, it's making sure that we have systems in place that teach parents even in the home things that they can do but by even three years old getting kids into preschool that has education components because by the time of kindergarten we're having to fix way way more um, we're even seeing decreased gray matter in the brain in children by the age of five who've not had an engaging experience so you know it's more than just can we fix the education system it is really what's happening in that first five years that are so impressionable that also have relations with trauma and you know future capacity for this individual. So we talk about investing money. We look at research on is it more effective to invest money in three-year-olds and 
four-year-olds than it is our juniors and seniors. We're seeing better results investing more money into three and four-year-old. If it's the same amount of money, let's send off our juniors and seniors and let's make sure yeah, our three-year-olds and four-year-olds are ready anyway. to go. Right. My senior year, I was a lost cause. I went half of the time. I watched a soap opera. How in the world that ever was something I did? It's embarrassing to admit. That would be my skeleton in the closet. That series of my senior year where I didn't go to school much and watched a uh, soap opera every day. But you, I, you I, like, I yeah, but matter went you, down you, the tubes my senior year. Yes, but here you teach people at an institution I was kicked out of. Yes. So it all comes you win. full circle. Full, yes, you win. Yes. I do also have grave concerns, and it's not about the institution itself, but we seemingly. Are, as time goes on, evolving into a society where we are disconnecting kids from parents. And I'm just such a huge believer in uh, not, you know, um, book smarts are very important, but human relations and, and just common sense stuff that, that you know, more and more parents and kids that just, you know, it seems as if we're taking more and more responsibility away from parents, mm -hmm. whether, you know, when I was in school, you got a school lunch, well now there's also breakfast, and then there's summertime, and it's like, it, I, I believe it may be genuine, a lot of people are trying to help the kids, but every time we do that, we're telling parents, you're not needed for this any longer. You're not needed when it comes to uh, these particular issues, and at some point, I think parents begin to believe it, and they think, well, I have the kid, take it home, and then give it to somebody else to take but, care but of. Let's, the feeding, the feeding mm. programs in schools were added, mostly it began in schools where the kids were low income, right. and they weren't getting food otherwise, so they were showing up to school not ready right. to learn because they were starving. But that's not what's happening so today. It's not what's happening yeah. today, but that's where it began. So mm -hmm. again, going back and saying, let's you know, work with systems that are effective, not just blanket systems, um, but especially in Springfield, if we we say, well, poverty's only on the north side, let's take breakfast out of the south side, that's actually not even true. We've got a lot of poverty, poverty um, kids showing up hungry on southeast Springfield. So the, the food part, but back to your point mm -hmm. though, which was let's help parents learn to be parents. I work with a lot of individuals that don't know how to be parents. Um, and when I say that, they love their kid. Um, they may just not have the resources or they didn't come from an environment because their mom worked and so they didn't have what you're talking about, that nurturing educational environment at home. We have to go though for now. So listen, thanks to both of you for being here. Nick Reed and Amy Blancett, this issue is not gonna go away mm -hmm. anytime soon. Hopefully we come up with an answer before it gets too bad. Anyway, we'll be back after this.